Hey, Wynn. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon for me. Good morning, your time. Indeed. Hey, Reed. How's it going? Doing pretty well. Glad to have you on finally. This is great. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Happy to yeah. always talk about Excel and Power BI, you know? <laughs> well, especially the amount of the, all the different ways that there is abilities to connect them, not just export to them. Um, Indeed. I'm sure as we'll get, we'll get into is like that, 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 the question that we hate getting from a customer is like, does it export to Excel? Like, like, I mean, if you yeah. want to just copy and paste your data, like, oh yeah, please, like, please don't disconnect the data. Um, but uh, I think like before we can start geeking out on all, all the ways to, to access and get into that, <laughs> I'd love uh, a, a chance for you to um, share a little bit about yourself, uh, where, where you are in the world, certainly, and also okay. um, what you do as a part of the BI community. Yeah, so I'm in uh, Perth, Western Australia, so pretty remote, a good four and a half hour flight to Sydney, which is pretty crazy. Um, been here it's about the most, 50. It's the most remote city in the world as far as a flight from any other major metropolitan city, right? Something like that. It's up there in some sort of claim. I think there's, yeah, it certainly claims yeah. it. And it's it's far enough to be far. <laughs> You're not driving to another city, put it that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so been here about sort of 16 years now, originally from the UK, um, but came over here and um, essentially uh, was an or am an Excel consultant and trainer and then became a Power Query, Power Pivot consultant and trainer. And now, you know, when Power BI came out, those very first early days started doing that as well. Um, I'm part of a company that's been around for 20 years and we deliver training and Power BI solutions. So I'm an ex accountant, used to be a chartered accountant with PricewaterhouseCoopers back in the day for my sins, but this stuff's much more fun than uh, playing about with uh, auditing people and all that sort of nonsense. Well, and doing your own thing too, I'm sure is the own set of reward, reward that goes with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, be, be in your own boss to some extent and um, providing solutions that people love and find useful and training people and see people's eyes light up when you show them this stuff. It's sort of, it's all, you know, really enjoyable. And I'm, you know, been doing the job now for 16 years. So it's, which is a bit crazy, but haven't, haven't thought about leaving one day and I'm a director there at the company now and stuff. So it's awesome. Even written a book now as well on the topic, you know, I'm fully nerding out about this stuff. So love it. Congrats on that. Yeah. But book authorship's not yeah, easy. Um, and I, I think as you, you and every other author, uh, author knows is the, it's a lot of, um, it gives you clout and cred, uh, street cred for sure to know that you've written one, but the amount of effort that goes in versus like, it, nobody writes a book to get rich. They write a book to establish themselves and their skill sets and to, sh and to share information with the community. Yeah, I'm sure there's the odd one that sort of does, you know, goes goes crazy and people do well out of it. But, you know, it's not going to be Lee Child-esque, you know, multimillionaire times bestsellers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to happen. So, but it's, no, 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 it's... yeah, you're you're not going to make it your first billion off of a Power BI nah, book. No, nah. you might you make so, your first but... ten thousand. Twenty thousand off of a Power BI book. You might make your money over back. multiple years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, you can make the money back on time that you put into it. Yeah, but it's an, I, I just enjoyed the process, and it was something I wanted to do. I had a little itch that I wanted to do it. So, uh, and it was it was fun for most of it, and by the end, it gets a bit annoying, especially all the edits and the mistakes, and even when you proofread. You know, I proofread it a whole bunch of times. Had other people proofread it got my first hands on my first physical copy, opened up page one, bottom of page one, typo. <laughs> so. Yep. That like, and that's yeah. honestly one of the reasons that I went from blogging to the videos is if you make an um, or you miss, you say the wrong word in a sentence, nobody's very few people in the world are going to like comment on like, you said this word when it should have been that you said, um, who instead yeah. of whom. Nobody's going to comment yeah. on it, but if you write a blog post, that's incorrect. I've had like, and it's all, it's oh. very friendly when they, when they point it out, but like, Hey, by the way, I notice on like, you know, sentence, uh, <laughs> sentence one on the second paragraph, like I proofread read this like eight times and I still missed that. It, so I, I got, I think frustrated with the editing process and I, I do have to do a lot less of that in yeah, video yeah. content creation, yeah. um, which I feel like is more of my natural, um, uh, uh, process for everything. Yeah. Yeah. I do get some, you know, the nice constructive yep. comments on YouTube, like, uh, hey, get a new mic. You know, that's it. The one comment. 
It's like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know, your, your mic's pretty I, good. Like, I mean, you're, you're not talking out of this. You're talking about the, you know, you're talking out of the mic that's in front of you. Yeah. I think, I think it was like from, it was a video as well from like two years ago. And even then the sound wasn't that bad and it's free. You know, the content's free. Don't complain about free content. <laughs> so, yeah, yep. it's fun. Yeah, I, 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 thankfully, at least in the Power BI community, the amount of trolls out there are really small. Like, I, it's pretty yeah. rare that I get a very rude, uh, like, <laughs> the worst that I'll get usually is, you know, I can't believe I just spent 10 minutes watching this video. What a complete waste of time. Like, I, you know, it's like, okay, I mean, yeah. it, fair sure it's yeah. yes sorry the video sucked for you but like that that's yeah. probably the worst that i get um as as far as feedback yeah. is people who just like hated the video for whatever reason um but that's one out of probably 300 comments that i get it, it's, yeah. it's very very rare almost almost everything that's ever commented on is 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 usually a question or positive feedback which i i think i like this because i know the internet can be a very cruel place but it's nice at least in this bubble of the bi that most people who go to read content like a blog and a commenter on a video they seem to be fairly uh, polite and kind individuals who appreciate the free content. Yeah. No, agreed. Agreed. Yep. <clears throat> but um, uh, thanks for the background about yourself. Also, um, Perth is on my list to visit at some point. I did go to Australia Excellent. last time, didn't make a chance to get out there, but I've heard it's a great wine region, a lot of good wine uh, out in Perth oh, and a lot of wineries yeah. in the area. So uh, yeah, it yeah. seems like that would be a fun weekend activity is to kind of go uh, hopefully like go. Uh, Hopping around some of the the, the vineyards um, as a yeah. checklist item. Absolutely, got some beautiful beaches, got some nice vineyards, got some beautiful mm -hmm. coral. Although the coral, uh, there's some nice coral about sort of like snorkeling and scubaing about ooh, scuba, yeah. half an half an hour, and then also some of the best, like better than um, it's going to be controversial, um, better than the Great mm -hmm. Barrier Reef is the Ninglu okay. Reef, which is about it's a 13 hour drive. Okay, but insane. thirteen. So you gotta, you gotta fly. So there's no, there's no flight to it. You gotta drive to it. Well, there is a little, there is a little flight. It's quite expensive, so people tend okay, to drive, okay. especially if they're taking the family. But if you're on your own traveling around, then yeah, and it's okay, a good fun okay. drive if you like straight roads <laughs> with nothing to see. <laughs> just get a, get a Tesla in the autopilot and just be work in the, you know, yeah. in the passenger seat. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Excellent. Ah, good. Yeah. Um, Make sure you let me know when you're coming, and I'll. Uh, Put on put on a show <laughs> excellent and probably present at the user group down there yeah awesome there we go so what uh what are we going to get into today about excel and power bi it sounds like there's at least a few different ways besides um clicking the export data button in power bi desktop which <clears throat> we well, hopefully you're not doing as part of our part of our exploration and exports because then the data is immediately stale and disconnected so yeah we'll you know we'll start very briefly with that you know Here's a couple of ways of getting it out, but okay. not necessarily great. And then some more options with yeah, linking different ways. A couple of little traps, a couple of little things to be aware of if you're trying to share that exported Excel file as well. Um, things to be aware of and a couple of yeah, little tips and hacks and tricks along the way. So sure. yeah, again, it's something I'm, I'm exploring. Um, so hopefully, you know, there may be some stuff in the comments of people suggesting different ways of doing this. I love learning when I try and teach people. I'm always being shown new things, so it's part of the fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like my favorite part of an instructor is being able to learn. Um, if you're ready, I yeah. can go ahead and flip over to your monitor. Yeah, go for it. Sweet. <clears throat> awesome. So look, we're gonna start off with this report. It's published and we're gonna extract some of this data into, into Excel. Now, way number one, not to do this. And this is like, you know, you, you try everything under the sun to block downloading. But there's, I don't know if you people are aware of this, because I wasn't really until recently. You can actually, I'm just screenshotting this, okay? So there's my little screenshot. I'm going to go into Excel. And under Power Query now, there's From Picture. So you can actually import the data using Power Query from a picture. Here we go. Don't do this, by the way. It's I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's the equivalent of like a... Uh... The, you know, the, the import from PDF, which some people unfortunately have to do. So I, I do yeah. see a need for this. I'm sure it exists, but it's like fuzzy lookups. Like, God, I really hope you have a better way of getting Oof. your data in. Yeah, because the numbers here, you can actually type over them if then it flags the ones it's not sure about. And it's a bit cocky about the ones it is sure about, which it gets wrong sometimes. I'm not going to mess about. I'm just going to insert and show you what it looks like. There you go. So that's one way of getting your data into Excel. 
I do not recommend it. Okay, but from picture, there we go. So a little, little bit, little bit awful that way. All right. So uh, let's talk about the, uh, the the brief ones, the export data. So under the export data, data with current layout. Let's take a very quick look at that one. All right, and it'll just spit out a little Excel file called City Sales, and we'll have a quick look at what it looks like. All right, so here it comes. All right, so it's got a bit of formatting in there, but it's not live, it's dead. And it tells you that the filters down here, what filters applied, because I've got a little filter in the filter panel on for 2021. That's nice. Donald so, actually had a great uh, little um, example of this. Is he uses data pictures to get financial tables off websites. So if, ah, if, if, yeah. one, I would, I would argue like I'd slap the hand of a website that if, if they had any kind of a table, it should actually be the, the you know, you could highlight and copy the text, not just an image. So like slight like shake of the hand at a website that doesn't do that. But that's actually a great situation where that can come in handy. Yeah, yeah. That's a, they, you know, there's all, there's a need for these things. We don't want there to be a need, but you know. Agreed. Yeah, well, yeah these, these, these are band-aids on a problem, but they're good band-aids because of, yeah. the problem is outside of the locus of control of companies like Microsoft where this data exists. And, and the whole sort of, you know, we, we shouldn't export and stuff like this. The business, you know, having worked as a management accountant for banks and stuff, we've got questions that a CEO asks us and they want an answer that afternoon. And I want to get some data and do and do a quick sort of mashup with some other figures and stuff like this. I haven't got time to put in a request to IT to create me a view in a table. So there's just a need for these little ad hoc things. Once it becomes repeating, if you're doing that every month, then you definitely need to set this up as a proper process and not go for this sort of quick and dirty. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, the next one under here is um, under summarized data. We've got the ability to go. I won't go to the live one yet. I'll do that because that's probably the best one. And that's new. Uh, before I even mentioned about doing this session, this didn't exist. So this is a late edition. Yeah, it was I was going to say, it was so, like, I like 30,000 used to be the limit um for yeah pretty much since inception that was the most you could ever do so the fact that you can get up to half a million is a lot uh, again yeah. it's one of those like why do you need that much data coming out of this like if you're doing that use analyze in excel i will i'm also probably getting just yeah show, yeah yeah I'm, i, I want to know microsoft's business business cases for this what customer needed to not use analyze in excel and needed up to five hundred thousand rows in a in an Excel document. Yeah, because they, you know, they want the detail to then do some pivot tables and stuff off it, and it's extra but, effort to do all that because like they're they're, they're yeah. probably not taking that raw data anywhere. More than likely, they're re they're, they're aggregating it again, right? Um, but so if yeah, you do if you do analyze the problem with analyzing Excel is you need to know what measures, what fields, etc., have been used to recreate the visual. True, true. And then the part of and that goes to the, and it's something I spent a lot of time in my trainings on, is it, it's curating both the the report experience for, for people, to, so the report's understood, but also the, the data set. Like if you want shared data sets in your service, you have to name, hide, organize, create hierarchy. Like yes. everything has to be done where if you search for the word sales, you don't get eight sales measures on four different yes. tables. And then it's like, well, nope, I have zero idea how to use this. I know if I ask Mark or Sharon, how to use this they're they're not going to get back to me for days like nope i'm just going to go back to exporting it's faster yeah yeah mm -hmm. totally um that, and that is one of the issues of this you know the, I, I totally agree with that those comments um so then if you do do the sort of just export it just comes out as a table with you know no special formatting um the thing i like about this is the filters are at the top which when you've got a big table is good um because let me show you another one here if i go to a different uh page let me let's say i've built a little drill through page or something um like this if i export this one export data and i'll go for the third option here i'll go for summarized and um oh actually i'll, I'll just i'll just do this one to show you um so i'll do this one again export if you do this with a big long table Okay, the good stuff is the filters at the top, but if you do it any other way, this filter explanation appears at the bottom, right underneath, and you've got to go all the way down to 
three and a half thousand rows before you see what filter has been applied or 500,000 rows if you do the live connection. Okay. So okay. I don't like the, I don't like the fact that the I like the fact that the filter appears at the top there. If you do it any other way, the filter appears at the bottom, which I don't really like. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, OK, so then we go back here and we talk about the live connection, which is the fun new one, which is great. OK, so if we go export data. Oh, by the way, underlying data normally turned off by default to actually okay. get into the okay. underlying stuff. So in desktop, you have to go to options and settings and down to report settings. And normally this one selected. It says allow them to export summarized data, whereas this one says and underlying data. And I so, think the default is just the top one normally. It's yeah. summarized, right? Yeah, yeah. like which is important because that's otherwise can be a potential security issue. Like let's assume you have social security or anything else that maybe the DAX is automatically including because there are certain queries can include other columns that are unexpected to the developer and you may be exporting information you don't want to. So it, it is good yeah, that yeah. that is a exception to the rule when you need it for these situations where people need to basically do bulk exports of data, you can turn on that um, so this, underline. So this is what it then looks like. This is the underlying data. So it's not summarized, it's all the individual transactions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that have made up. So yeah, if you're not wanting people to see that, make sure that default is set to the summarized level. Um, the formatting comes out a bit weird with the 15 dots and stuff, but you know, they are numbers and they do add up if you just want to add them. But yeah, what have we got there? 50,000 records, you know, just exported to mm -hmm. make up that yeah. one visual. Yep. So yeah, um, okay. And then let's go to the live one, which is a fun one. All right, so under here, export data, summarize. This is new, newish, next last couple of months. Uh, live connection, 500,000 rows, export. Okay. Now, this does authenticate you. So you do have to sign in. You have to be signed in to Excel. Yep. Um, it comes out like this. If you're not, you know, that's so this it. Is the, this is the equivalent, and now that I'm actually thinking about it, so live connection, this is basically just downloading the OD. ODC file and opening it automatically for you. It's it's a cleaner way of getting an analyze and Excel connection. Yes. And your data is presented as a table like this. Oh, uh, okay. and, and, and that's the other big difference is because I think there is still is a separate button to analyze in Excel, which gives you a yes, pivot table. Yes. This gives you the raw. Yeah. Okay. So both have a live connection. This is the raw table. Um, and I, I'm actually seeing this for the first time. So my curiosity part of this is I guess just the refresh button on the on the the data ribbon would pull in new data. Yeah. So check this out. If I check if I change this to hello, and I type delete a whole bunch of these things. Okay. I can just either go data refresh, or I can right click in the table, and go refresh. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Off it goes. There you go. Live updated, which is cool. Okay. The things that I, I the things that uh, I like the refresh, but the some of the, the yellow or red flags for me on this is like if you try to edit data in a pivot table um you can rename the the, the values in the in the, uh, in the row in the categorical rows like sydney you can change to something else it just it just relabels it but it won't let you change the numbers it's because it's you know attached to a model um this one seems yes. a little bit it's, it's not super clear that because i my first thought is if somebody does that did i just be right back to the to the data set if i have i changed anything and also when you refresh they might not realize that those numbers are going to change so um, my pipe dream for Microsoft is maybe to have some kind of uh, a text box to the side that explains either what happens or if you make an edit, you get a little pop up that just says like, as soon as this refreshes, any manually adjusted changes will be overwritten. Just because I, I think that can be a little confusing to people doing this for the first time, expecting like a, um, a disconnected copy paste. Yeah, there's nothing to say it's linked, you know. Yeah. Um... The other thing that I wish they had, there's there's nothing here to tell me what data set I'm connected to. I have no idea. I do not know what data set this is coming from. So if you are using this, you really have to document immediately. I like put a hyperlink or something in here, put a link to the actual Power BI report in a, on a documentation page, because there's nothing. It just says this, this is the, the, he, the filters is on a separate page. Okay, which is great. And it just says data connected to Power BI. 
click refresh, which is sort of what you were mentioning about it needs a message. Yep. But what part of Power BI is it connected to? Which workspace, which data set, you know? That, yeah, and that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. And I, which I do is there any like. like, is there any right click like connection properties or? Any, yeah, like, so let's probably buried to get there. Yeah, it's buried, right? So let's let's do that. So if I right click in here and go to table and edit query. Yeah. Okay. It does and come you up. Do, yeah, well, I was just going to see the, the, the tab name is the name of your data set, right? Demo file with underlying data? Or is that the is that the visual name? Uh, that's the um, that's the name of the f file, actually, which I hadn't actually noticed, Reed. So there you go. I've learned something new today. There we go. Lovely. So, yeah, actually, so, so, so that's the published that. That's the published okay. data set report name, right? Yeah, that's the okay. So we have at least one one spot where where it is. Uh, is we do. Out, so so it. Good. Okay. But I hadn't even realized that. So excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it should show it in here as well, right? I reckon it should show it up there because somebody will change this name to something else, and then you're totally lost. So you need to document it. Um, but yeah, under table uh, edit query, you got this little box. But it, let me go to a better box because you can't resize this one. So to get to the better box, you go right click, uh, you go table, and you say external data properties. And then you've got to know that you can click this little icon, which no one does know, connection properties. And then okay, you can go okay. to definition. Okay, so this is then resizable, which is good. And you can zoom in up here. But, you know, what does that tell anyone? Apparently, well, that's then you're the main... like. Yeah, you're what asking people to read mean? code at this point, so. And then this this is the good stuff. This is the actual, you know, mm -hmm. DAX that's then, then executed. Um, you can see that there's the 2021 filter in here. And I can actually edit this code as well. Now I happen to know that I've got... Interesting. I've got a huh. budget measure. I'll just call it budget. Oh, and you got a blind code though, uh, as I call yeah. it. There's, there's no IntelliSense or model. Yeah, so like as long as you perfectly write it, it will work. But there's no validator or anything else. You just have to no. um, kind of write the DAX off your off the cuff. No, actually, no, this, I'll show you, this is still I'll this is still DAX. It's not T-SQL uh, yet. And I'll show you a little hack to to avoid writing this code in a sec. Um, but <laughs> I think let me check. Yeah, I think that works. And I click OK. There you go. I've got my budget pulled in as well, so you know you can you can play about with this stuff, which is which is pretty cool. Um, so then to get to your point, actually about you know having to write that, if I have access to the underlying Power BI desktop file, which I do, um, and I use DAX Studio, so let's go external tools, DAX Studio, okay, I can write. I can build a quick query that I can then use. So click OK, uh, query builder. All right, so let's go um, customer group, chuck that in, and customer name, and okay, okay. quantity ordered. Let's go quantity ordered in there, and we'll filter it by product and coffee strength. Uh, filters. So let's have a look, hover over this. It should, oops, it's a bit temperamental. Okay. What have I got? Medium the down the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go medium uh, equals or is medium. Okay, press enter. And go update. So there's my bit of code, which if I run it, you'll see the little table. Okay, but I can grab that code now. Control C. Go That's into nice. Excel, back into here, right click, table, go to external data properties, click on that little icon, go to definition, and just delete everything in there, paste, and click OK, and click OK again, and there you go. I like Pulling it. Pulling it in from Excel. So, you know, you can play about with this stuff. Again, I'm not. This is this early days of exploring. I'm sure there'll be a use case somewhere that'll pop up and I go, oh, actually, yeah, you can. Because I've, I've done a little YouTube video about some of this stuff and there were people going, oh, you know, I really needed a table format for just pulling this every time <laughs> um, in order to then just, you know, I don't know, what whatever they were using it for. Um, but yeah, so 
pretty interesting, I reckon. I like so, it. yeah. Um, now, what I then did was, right, can I share this with somebody in an app? Can I include this linked table in an app? So what I did was I basically went into the workspace and I've done one already just in the interest of time, but I, I went up this new upload feature. I just upload a copy of that, you know, report okay. that Excel file okay. from, from SharePoint. And it just shows up like this. Okay. So once you, and if I click on it, okay, it'll just take a little while. This warning keeps popping up. They're claiming they're going to go and fi fix this, but they haven't yet. You know, it's your own product, Microsoft. Why would it be unsafe? You have to they click still that have that time. issue for years. Anytime you use Power Query or other certain connections, yeah. every time you open the workbook, you'd have that annoying warning at the top and it would scare customers. Like, what do you, what do you mean this is unsafe? Like yeah, it's I know. just using a plugin called Power Query and that has to show up. There's no way to turn it off. Yeah. So, you know, the, the file's here and I could, you know, wrap that up in an app, which I, which I did. I sort of updated the, I published an app and I shared it. So I shared it with another user. Let me just show you the audience. So the pro user. Okay. So let me log in as the pro user and show you what they see. I go to the app and uh, connect to Excel. So this is the app that I shared with them. It's having a little think. Okay, so they can see the report, they can play about with it, lovely. Then they go to the Excel file. Okay. And, ah, the spinning wheel of doom, <laughs> of, of nothing happening, and they sit here and they, yep. and they wait a while. Um, and eventually a warning box will pop up saying, failed to connect. Not you don't have permission or a useful warning, but failed to connect. So the issue is, you have to also give them access to the to the mm. Excel file in SharePoint, which is really annoying. I think that you have to go and do that. So let me show you if I go back in here and if I go and add a new tab and go to the little SharePoint folder. Um, so this folder or this file, I've got to give them access to. So I could go down to this one file or the whole folder and go manage access. Uh, add some access to the pro user. Okay, grant access. Don't need to notify them. Okay, access granted. So then if I go back to the Power BI report, this is the warning that they did get. You can't open the workbook. Try opening in Excel online or try later. Terrible warning. Okay, mm -hmm. totally. And I'm not, I don't know if get help will, will help them at all. Okay, so what I'll try and do now, now I've got given access. This time when I click on it, something a bit okay. more positive is happening and within a few seconds yes you get the warning to scare them off and then they click yes and then they've got access to the to the linked so if people you know you can then consume it all in the same nice spot and it's a little bit more controlled to some extent i think but again you need to document okay. this in the excel file to say hey this excel file is embedded in this app or this workspace because there's no you know you don't know by looking at the excel file that it's yeah. being shared to people in the app. So there's there's the disconnect. Also, the little bit that sort of concerns me somewhat, you've got to be a bit disciplined about this, is that in the workspace, if I go back to, uh, let me go back here, and I go to the uh, lineage view, again, there's no, there's the data set, there's the one Power Bear report, there's no lineage currently for the connected Excel workbook. So mm -hmm. you don't know that your data set is being used in that Excel file, which is again, another weakness, I think. Just concerns me that there's lineage, no way yeah, of- Just also shout out to just how how awesome the lineage view is. It's, it's continuously oh, yeah. one of my favorite features. I, I look forward to when we finally get some of these like Power Query Online type features and other stuff eventually in the desktop, which will be nice. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, but yeah, Excel file is not showing up which is a bit disappointing. Um, okay, so 
So that was that, that live connect was sort of uh, is pretty new and pretty interesting, can solve certain business scenarios, but you just got to be, I think if you're going to use it, the message is you have to be very disciplined about documenting in your Excel yeah. file, yep. Yep. everything. Um, okay. So if I go back to my workspace, uh, oh, sorry, I am in my workspace and go back to the list view. The other way is, and this is the way that sort of I was using before that connect to live visual, the other little hack was you can actually just click on the, the data set itself. And then previously you had these options down the side where you could just go and click the tables and the measures. So if I want to go, um, I don't know, let's go just customer name and customer city. Okay. 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 <clears throat> So you can do this, but you can't in this view anymore. You used to be able to, but you can't in this view anymore, click any values or any measures. It just, it's just basically the table only view. And you could, you know, mm -hmm. export and you can only pick one table at a time in this particular screen. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you could export that view to Excel. If somebody's given you sort of build access to the data set, you could come in here, like let's say there wasn't a visual ready, you could come and create your own. Um, but what they've so now called it was called formatted had, like, tape. Oh, so, oh I was sorry. Gone. Go ahead. Yeah, I, no, I just on. was going to say the uh, it's it. This is a, a feature that came out I think what back in the summer or fall. The the exploration. It I yeah. played with it a couple of times. I don't think I've used it extensively enough. Granted, most of my clients aren't. In, this is more for as you reason paginated report crowd. Uh, people who actually need printed data. That's what this is really useful for to be able to build out the queries off the model, export it, everything. Um, it, it, it's a really nice interface. I just, I think I need to spend a little bit more time with it because it, it seems like for customers that need granular data, this is a, a great UI to not uh, to be able to get that data out very quickly without having to even go to Excel yet. You can just use the browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got, you know, the different options, like you say, I'm not sure why you go a tabular view to PowerPoint, but you know, each to their own. Um, but yeah, so you can build up a, a simple sort of table and this used to be when you could bring in other things there was a bit of a bug where it sort of it didn't aggregate the data necessarily properly so they've just removed it totally so mm -hmm. but you could go show query and there just like in dax studio i could copy that code and put it into that excel file and create a live link yep. if i wanted to so that was the sort of old way of doing it and i say old i mean like three months ago before the new feature came along so but you could use that code however what they now go is right create paginated report which was called formatted table for a while on my computer it's now saying paginated but i found doing training i don't know about you Reed, but i found doing training that they're a b testing a lot of this stuff now even within companies by renaming buttons yeah. and things like this and you say click on this button called create <laughs> workspace oh mine says new workspace and i'm like oh there's everybody and yeah so they keep changing well, the button name australia does get um service updates more quickly uh than other regions as well so i think they are about what 48 to 72 hours ahead of the us just because it and i asked microsoft about this once because um there, there's some other mvps who always manage to get like certain tweets and other stuff around a feature and i go look <laughs> for it like well, i don't have it yet and then i, I asked yeah. uh, my, the microsoft team is well it's a smaller market so generally speaking when we start doing rollouts we enter smaller markets first we kind of wait to see if anybody throws up a red yeah. flag and then we roll it out to the other markets. <laughs> we're just we're just a test mice in the in the <laughs> I lab. Mean, it's, it's, essentially, you're you're a big market, but you're not as big as the US market, I think is, yeah, is apparently yeah. their logic behind that. But it apparently that's the reasoning why even depending on your region, some people get updates at different frequencies. Yeah, yeah. It's just a bit crazy. Um so yeah, difficult when you're train when you're doing training and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um so if I want to get a bit fancier, then I basically go the full experience i'm not sure this one screen is particularly useful because you can only pick from one table and you can't put any measures in there you're not allowed to pick they're not even clickable so not great um but under create paginated report instead then you've got full sort of flexibility in terms of the table and you can chuck a few measures in there as well if you want to you know you can chuck your budget sales in there um which I don't know if I got in there and you on those sorts of things and you can you know thank god read thank god we have bold header flashy rose as an option under the formatting yeah because my life would you know 
<laughs> my reporting <laughs> would drop dramatically drastically if I didn't have that. I've um, never seen anybody that has ever used that. Like the only one that I've ever liked off of the styling, arguably, is uh, I like minimal. Uh, yeah. I do minimal, and then I do one or two little tweaks to I, I make the bar. But I find that the the quickest way to a good looking table is usually is, is sparse or minimal, so, something like yeah. that. Maybe condensed <laughs> if you if you need yeah, like printed. Of, but any of the alternating or any anything flashy that's been out since Power BI designers existed, and I've I don't think I've ever seen a report out of like book cover reports that I've ever actually had that. Like no actual deployed reports have used those. I'd love oh, to see the telemetry. Funny. I'm sure Microsoft has data. Can you give me a bar chart percentage of each one of these and percentage of, of reports with them installed? I bet you that's yeah. pretty much zero for contrast alternating rows. You know, you you see on um, on some oh, of the uh, I know, sort of, you see on sort of forums and stuff. You know, what how do how do I prep for a, a, a an interview for Power BI analyst or something like that? Rule number one: Do not present a report to them with bold header, flashy rows. Okay, to any potential employer, <laughs> I won't employ you. If you show me a demo report with that on, I won't employ you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we can go, you know, export to Excel, but again, not linked, not live, a one-off dump. Um, give it a second. That's the other one. Hold on, it's still opening. There we go. Bold header, flashy rows. Okay. So. It is what it is, um, <laughs> but you can you can do that. <clears throat> um, okay, so analyze in Excel. Let's go into that one. So jumping back into here, going back to my report, and let's go into the report because this is normally where people sort of find this. Um, so under the export option, you know, analyze in Excel is the sort of probably the most well known way of connecting live to the data to the sort of actual linking to it. And normally this pops up last week, weirdly it launched desktop again for me, which was bizarre during the middle of a training course. Um, but normally okay. you click open Excel for web and then it opens up, okay? You will need, if you're doing this, you have to be given build access to the uh, data set and it pops up and then you can, you know, click in whatever you want, I want, quantity ordered by, I don't know, customer name in the rows. And you can just build a nice little live and <clears throat> sort of interactive report, which is pretty cool. And it's connected. Yeah, yeah you know, so I, I like it. It's good. Um, currently, I think, I don't know if they, they mentioned it, but they said you were going to be able to drag in simple like product name to give you a count. But currently, for my versions, yeah, uh, it doesn't let me. If you're that running, was, uh, cause that, that's been a big request. Um, I, I thought that was already added cause and not in the web that, that, that is a, it's a public and it's on the roadmap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's good. Yeah, but it's... It, Go it is available in the beta version of Excel desktop. It does work. Gotcha. Um, but I, not, I think a little bit of context for, for, for people that are, are listening to us, um, nerd out on this. So the, one of the biggest. And by big, it's still a pretty small grievance, but one limitation of analyzing Excel is the only things that can ever go into the values well of a pivot table or a chart is a DAX measure. So the pro a properly built model, I would argue like a data set should, should just be entirely measure driven. Like you should have a sales measure and everything else. Like if you need accounts of something, you already have that measure in the model. But for those improperly built, maybe incomplete models with not all the fields you need or some ad hoc situations where you need a customer account or you need to basically take a column and do a count like you could in Power BI, where you drag it in, you choose min, max, sum, et cetera. That cannot be done with a connected model in the Power BI service. It can, uh, you, you basically would have to go back to the core model, create a measure, save, republish, and then you know get it back into Excel. So that that's what is should be coming out hopefully in a few months in a public release, but it's in the beta version of Excel at the moment. Yeah, I, I thought it was already in web, and, but it just doesn't seem to be, a, a not in, well, not in my tenants anyway. So, but it's gotcha, on, gotcha. yeah, inside a, inside our Excel desktop. So I messed about with one of these earlier and I did open in, uh, let me go and find it. So let me just open this up a sec. Go and find the file. So good old one I prepared earlier fashion. Uh, here we go. Analyze. Let me open it up. 
So here's one I prepared earlier and, and built a couple of little charts and chucked a little slicer on. Now, it, because it's live connected, it does take, you know, when you first open up the file, it does take, you know, a little while for the for the screen to launch an update. But, you know, we've got a clickable, this is just going off to the data model, ability to slice and dice the data, you know, by different values, which is great. And it's connected live. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's awesome. Um, the other way of connecting to the data set is rather than going from Power BI here, these days you can go into, let me go up here, insert pivot table from Power BI. Okay. So you can actually go, I could go and co connect weirdly to a different data set if I wanted to. So I could connect to multiple data sets inside, like I can connect to some other data set. This is another one I published. So there's the one I'm connected to, but I can connect to a different one. Now, again, I don't think I'd ever recommend doing this because I'm sure it causes all sorts of grief connecting to multiple yeah, data sets yeah. inside one Excel file. But sometimes I just like seeing what's possible, not what you should do. So, so this is a totally it's different... Our, it's our job partially to break stuff, right? Yeah, but then yeah. we can tell what, people that... like, like, here's where you can go without diminishing returns and, and crap uh, going on. But if you push past this, which I'm going to show you how to do that, this is the this is the do not pass go zone. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes though, when you update and refresh, sometimes you get horrible warnings. Like if I opened up, if I republish and refresh, sometimes with two data sets, you get some weird warnings and it, it does seem to work. But there you go. I'm connected to two different data sets inside the one Excel file. So this is a totally different set compared to this one, which has got customers and product tables and the other one's employee data. So yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, another nice way of um, hooking up to data is data flows. So data flows are connected. You can connect to data flows in Excel now. So get data from Power Platform from data flows, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, so if you've got a data flow built, which I have let me just go back in here while that's loading up and if i go back into here and so i've created a little data flow here excel data flow demo inside that workspace so if i go here go to workspaces okay uh where is it connect to excel multiple ways excel data flow demo okay so we can go in here or we can grab a couple of these tables. So again, quite a nice way of hooking into, hooking into a data set or something like, or not the data set, but data that's held in Power BI. Mm -hmm. And we've got the nice connection up here, which is great. Okay. One thing I don't like is the sort of this bit where it tells you the different, you know, what data flow is this? Because that's sort of hidden under the hood here. Now, I can't zoom in on this screen. Uh, um, so I tend to split this out. Okay, and then this can be split. And just doing that little intermediate step, when you do that, it actually breaks this out into its components. Yeah. So you can go to the workspace. You can then go to the workout what workspace this was so 9110e scan down here there we go connect to excel multiple ways copy that text paste it all right and then it goes to 671 which is excel data flow demo copy that a little bit of a hack but i wish it just did this anyway rather than giving us those horrible codes and then into customer table so connecting to data flows pretty cool i like it um, and I mean, like the, so I have a question for you. How much have you used data flows versus uh, the da data marts so far? Data marts, not at all. Um, basically don't have um, a need for premium and don't have an, I can't see the need for data marts. I just, my world of sort of business users, um, that them are, our clients are the business users. We just haven't got a concept for where the business user would actually use a data mart. So just to, yeah, I don't quite get the concept yet. I'm not seeing I think a the, use case that I think, yeah. 
I think the one missing component, and, I, and I'm there with you. I mean, you're you're talking to two for people tuning in. You're, there's two MEPs that you're hearing that haven't used them that much. There, it is a great concept, and I think for some SMB markets, small to medium businesses, it is a wonderful grow up story of like businesses first database type thing where it's really easy to spin up. You can connect to it in SQL. You can use it with any other platform, but you can't write to it. It's a read only database. As soon as you have the ability for any tool like SSMS or something that can just push data into it, like any anything else. If you can just have this as a five second thing to spin up, I think that's where it can fit with data uh, data flows. But otherwise, because that's not available, I've yet to use it. Data flows is amazing. That still does everything I really needed to do for most of the uh, business scenarios that we've discussed. Um, but that's, yeah. that's the one missing component, I think, that still needs to show up in data marts for it to really be truly like a database in, in Power BI is right back. Yeah. You know, the one, that's a good point, actually. You know, some of the missing, some of the hassle things are like, people go, how do I add commentary live to a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to a Power yeah. BI report? Now, if you could write back commentary to a data mark in a nice, easy way, give somebody a nice little user form or input thing that they could mock up, it would solve, it would, it would address a lot of, that sort of thing would address a lot of issues. I've tried something with, or oh, Dataverse for Teams, building a simple, because you, you can connect, like do a live connection to Dataverse for Teams. And it's not that hard to set up um, yep. because then you can write your commentary and see it show up in the Power BI report instantly rather than waiting for the schedule refresh to kick in. Yep. So same thing with data marks, I guess, if you could have a nice, you know, table. Well, then that, that, that would be the database to write back stuff too. Um, I don't know if you've tried it. I've, uh, I've had Gopal, Gopal on a few times with InfoRiver, but that's actually a really oh, yeah. nice uh, write back tool because it, I mean, it's basically it's an advanced matrix, but it just it's plug and play to any relational data source, and then you just composite model it back into your report. So, form inputs or any kind of like a, a customer dashboard where you could change statuses and pipelines and all the other stuff where you'd want to comment or, or edit like that. That actually is a really useful vision for that stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I have played about with it, and it's yeah, pretty powerful. The old Info River stuff. It's good. Exactly. Um, and yeah, the last little thing to show you, this is a, an unused and unloved feature, and I'm yet to see it being used in the wild anywhere. But just again, one of those things of, oh, you can do this, but I'm not sure how I would ever use it, is the featured table and um, Excel data type functionality. Yeah. So in here, in my Power BI desktop file, in my model view, I went to my product table Okay, and I turned on this is featured table function down here. All right. And when you turn that on, this box pops up. And it says, you know, give it a description, pick one of the rows from your table as the row label, and then a unique ID column. I'm still a bit sketchy on, you know, why you would have the same product name for two different product IDs, but I guess you, yeah. you might, so, but this has to be unique. Okay, and then I published it. So what that then allows me to do is in Excel, let me just go a <clears throat> brand new empty sheet in here just to get rid of everything else. So under data, you now have under these drop downs, you have your organization data types. Okay, and one of them is the product table. And because I, I clicked on it yesterday when I was doing a test of this demo, it's up here, recently used. So what I can do is if I know there's a product called um, Pivot Power, okay? Yep. That's the, that's the name of one of my products. And I click on this, okay? I think it's called Pivot Power, might have to double check. Oh, what was it called? Um, let me call it, uh, let me just double check and just go down here to product table. Will it find out? Oh, there we go, different table. Okay, this is the tr trouble of doing demos. <laughs> Just name the same thing, product table in about seven different things. Okay, so there's my exactly. little uh, element. And if I click on it, I get a nice little breakdown. Okay, the product ID, the brand, those are the columns, the fields from my table. And I can just extract whichever one I want. So I can just grab the coffee strength. There you go. So this is pretty cool. And it's a little formula mm -hmm. equals HA coffee strength. And you can even, I can go this way around. I could have a list of, if I click on this, 
I could have, so product ID S101. So let's say you're giving a little table with all these different products. You could highlight them all and you could go, right, what are these products by going to the product table? It would change the name of them and then you could get whatever data you needed out, which is pretty nifty. All right. So you get like again, a big list not... of, uh, of values and yeah. it, it has certain data types and certifications. I've I've, I've yet to use it. it. It demos really cool. I, I do have a couple slides even in my trainings that talk about like what this feature is. It usually just gets skipped over pretty quick. Um, but yeah. I, I like that it it has almost like the uh, the, the selection validation uh, from there and then corresponding fields. The little little menus plus all that metadata that comes with it is is a pretty nice interface. I just wish it was adopted more. I, I, I don't think a data set table is the right place to store this. I just, I don't, I don't think that feels right. I think a data flow, cause it's a single table makes more sense if you could connect to a, to a data flow to do this, because you could then have a data flow that is your, I don't know, calendar table or your whatever customer table or some sort of single table that Excel could then feed into. And there may be some fields in there that you want to pick, but again, you're right. You know, some of this stuff, with with a lot of these things in Excel and Power BI, they they're there for demos and they're cool, but again, not seen a a real life use case. Although one of the Excel MVPs was using them for a certain scenario that they needed with one of their customers who's in retail, and they would, could just pick a product ID and I think see what the stock level was instantly within okay. Excel, something like that. So potential, you know. So yeah, so that was the other one. Um, but so that pretty much, there's probably more than five. I said five ways to connect. Um, there's probably a few, maybe one or two more than five there, but that's pretty much what I wanted to show. Um, it, this works, you know, th this integration piece, it may not be what everybody thinks is the ideal and probably isn't, but in terms of speed and the fact that it, there's so many different options, I think there's something for everybody. There's something to solve your immediate use case in this product somewhere, which again, probably it's, sets yep. Power BI apart from its competitors in terms of this connectivity, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, I think they're unfortunately now we're kind of starting to retire the name a little bit, but the Power Platform, um, I, I think like that's, that is kind of where the power of Power BI comes in is the integrations with everything else and the cohesiveness across all of this, the, you know, like um, Tableau and uh, Alt Alterix is the data transformation tool. I was oh, yeah. confused. I confuse Actirix and Alterix because their names are very similar to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, financial product trans transformation product. Um, but you know, there's there's always that chance that like product A gets updated by company A and there, there's a bug or something, which can still even happen internally with Microsoft. But I, I I feel like there's a lot more conversations that happen between departments to make sure that the products work well together and they're aware of changes that come through versus compatible plugins between two businesses. And since Microsoft makes most of the office uh, you know, products out there or the ones that are most widely adopted and integrations at Azure. It's, it has something within its tenant, uh, pretty much every type of data scenario that you have for both uh, in, uh, consumption of the data or, or, or export or analysis of it. So that, that is, I think, what makes this uh, the, the platform very useful is the uh, you get like a thousand products in one, depending on what your business needs uh, for any of that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm interested to see how this sort of rollout of Power BI Desktop as part of Office goes and what the impacts are there and how, what the uptake yep. is. And, you know, it's it's a pretty bold move to to install it and see what happens. You know, I think they're I think they're trialing it with E5 to start with. I think that's where they're going. So people with an E5 license yeah. will get. Power BI desktop installed. I don't know if admins, how they keep that up to date or how that works. So I'm just interested to find out from, yeah, what the impact of that is. Exactly, and time will tell. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's, you know, even last week I was running training and I was, whenever I do Power BI, I can't resist putting a little bit of Excel demo in there as well, you know, just to show people yeah. that some of this stuff exists in Excel. Um, and, three there were three people from the same company on this course um they were you know public course and two people had the latest version of excel and one person their version was the on the current channel but it was two years out of date 
I, whatever the, the updates have been blocked. Now, my concern is that that's going to happen with Power BI. It depends on how, oh, I guess, it, how it, it gets, it does it get installed yeah, yeah, yeah. as the Microsoft Store version, and therefore the updates just happen. But that's sort of independent of then the Office update cycle. So it's a bit, yeah, I'm just interested to see what happens. I think they're going to bundle it in the pricing like they already do, but I, I would hope that they just because of the, the because you don't get new features every month for Excel. You get security updates at the most, and that maybe is like by quarter. Um, but I, I would imagine they would and hope that they would keep these kind of disconnected to a degree. Like, yes, it's technically all being installed as part of that, but the update package for Power BI Desktop is kind of in, still separately updated and installed to the store as it is today, where you just hopefully you know you wake up and turn your computer on and you you have the new update of whatever that yeah was for the month um and yeah you, and you're still on the, the quarterly updates for for excel or you know powerpoint or anything else just because like you said you'd lose you load it you lose out a lot of the new features and you'd basically become the equivalent of like power bi report server where six to eight months later you get the new feature that everybody else has been talking about yeah so yeah i'm hoping it works that way yeah. um you know if you are on the monthly channel now with excel there are there are monthly significant changes, not every month, um, but I guess the same as Power BI now, you know, we had, God, how many years of just insane updates did we have? We just, but now it sort of tails off a little bit and there's probably one pretty cool update every month, lots of little things, yeah. but one like, you know, oh, that's awesome. Same thing with Excel now, there's lots of these little tiny things in the background, but one good one every, one really good one every like two or three months, but these, they're coming every month now. And it depresses me when people still pay for, you know, Excel 2019 or something and buy it off the shelf and then never get any updates and ask, yeah. hey, when's that new feature coming to Excel 2019? Never. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you, yeah you've, when you buy a standalone product, you don't get features. That's, you know, no, no. You exactly. can't buy the sort of, you know, breaking bad box set and expect the you know, episode three or series, season three to ship to you or whatever. So, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't happen. So, uh, no, yeah, but... Is... Um, was there uh, any random questions in the chat or was there, hope folks uh, enjoyed the session? Yeah, I, I think just a lot of comments and everything that I'm seeing in here cool. from Donald, uh, some high fives. And oh, I actually forgot, to, I got to remember to like monitor for this. E each time somebody does one of those emojis, you get the little claps and stuff <laughs> oh, yeah. like that. that are, I've Excellent. actually tried to automate this. I've looked everywhere online and like outside of maybe doing PowerShell, uh, there's there's oh, no right. like plugin that lets me harvest a, an icon um, onto that. but. People seem to be really enjoying this, and uh, I think there is quite a bit of learning uh, from individuals on just cool. some of the new ways that they, they didn't realize they could get into Excel necessarily. So I, I learned uh, and was reminded of a bit of new things, and I got to discover that new live connection in export, which, so we have two ways to basically do a live connection now. You can do immediately, you can get a pivot table, you can get a flat table, um, but both yeah. maintain a connection back to the source. And like I think that's my number one takeaway is you don't ever need to export disconnected data there is like there are enough features available for connecting the two of them together to get data out of a model without having to like an, a month later oh i have to go export a new file because i can't refresh this one it's, you know and then you you end up with a server that has tens of thousands of extra files that are needed yeah yeah and i i imagine some part of the issue comes down to granting build access to people as well to do that live yeah. connection to do analyze in excel so it's it's that awareness of it'd be good if there were some stats you could get of how many people were regularly clicking the export button i don't know if that's possible yeah um but then you could go and have a conversation with those people and go hey i see that you're exporting this visual every month can Actually, i that, that, build? that's a great question because you could almost build a uh, a goals or metric um off of this like i don't know if that's exposed for the the, the api and the admin but i would I would be really curious because I, I know you can't track per page clicks or slices or anything else like that telemetry isn't available, right. but that's not exporting isn't really necessarily a report level feature in a way because you there's got to be a very specific command sent to the model to say like, give me data out of it. And it would be really yeah, nice yeah. like per report. If I, I, I don't care what visual or what page it's on. Did report A have 55 exports this month and yeah. flag me as an admin. Oh wait, a ton of people are dumping data out of here. I should probably go to that group and let them know Analyze and Excel exists. That would that would be really useful if it's available. And I I actually don't know the answer to that, but no, I would be very curious to know. Um, yeah, if if the the API um supports that because they've added 
10 or 15 new pieces of telemetry in the last year, I, I think. Right. Um, because I know Alex Whittles, who makes Power BI Sentinels, made, made some requests to add that. They recently oh, okay. have um, changed the, um, they, they've changed some of the, the reports, the, the built-in um, metrics reports, as that kind of has a new update with some more data in there. So they, they're definitely making it more robust on what's exposed as far as, uh, you know, tenant track tracking abilities. So yeah yeah maybe an idea an idea to like actually you know, i'll make a note to, to look into that like can you ideas ideas .com. yeah exactly no i think it'd that, be that a, would just, you know be a, yeah yeah be a valid thing i reckon so pretty well, cool. and i think that would make for a great like app source template report just to have something that i mean nothing else other than just how how much how often is my data being exported and where yeah uh, and then maybe slap the hands like don't do that go do this instead <laughs> yeah and I think my, my sort of core message to people who are, if they are building these exports for someone is just document, you know, inside the Excel file, where is the data coming from? You know, where is it get refreshed? If it's yep. being shared in an app somewhere, that the fact that it is being shared in an app, if your Excel files are being used as a data source, document inside the Excel file, hey, this is being used as a data source for Power BI. So it's all about, you know, you know when you're building it, great. But when you move on or somebody takes over your role, they have got no hope of working out what's going on. Exactly. In inline notes, anywhere you can. A note in a cell yeah. and comment in your measure using the note feature in Power Query. Like I, I hate taking dedicated documentation. It's just it's painful. But if I can sprinkle a little breadcrumbs everywhere that just explain stuff like that, it inline notes is, is my the thing that I prefer to do. Yeah, I'd agree. Excellent. Um, no, I actually just just took a note to like ask a couple of people later. Can you actually track data exports? Is this an API yeah, feature? Cool. Miguel Escobar would probably know because uh, he created that uh, uh, the, the he created that Power Query connector, right? That um, yeah, yeah, pretty much grabs everything from your tenant. Um, but that no, that's something useful to know. Uh, this has been fantastic, Win. I appreciate you taking time out of your morning to come on and join from uh, across the world down in uh, down from Perth and yeah, no worries. I, I'm sure now that everything's continuously opening back up and all this other stuff, we will uh, at some point bump into each other in person at some conference, I'm sure. Awesome. Look forward to it, Reed. Perfect. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. And everyone, thanks for joining on. And I will see you all online next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.